Good day and welcome to A Place Called Through. We're broadcasting from WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network, where I am your host, Patricia Wade Goings. A Place Called Through, a place where we share real stories of real people going through, getting through, being through, stories impacting one life, one person, day after day. And we do this by our mission of hope that comes by your charitable donations. Can I ask you to do this one thing today for me? Do a charitable donation to help us further this mission, to continue going globally across the world. And you may do so at WYTV7.org. And I'm thanking you in advance for what you have already done and what you're still going to consider to do. Today, we're so honored to have with us as our guest, Ms. Cheryl Bush. Ms. Bush is here to talk about her story of forgiveness and finding herself, who she is and who she's called to be. And we wanna talk again with her today about father, fathers, fatherlessness in the households. So we welcome as our guest today, Ms. Cheryl Bush. Welcome, Ms. Bush. Thank you so much. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor to be here today. We are so honored and favored that you've had the time today. We know that you have a real busy schedule, but we just thank you for your presence with us today. And as we stated, we want to talk to you a little bit today about your story of forgiveness that started way back in your early childhood with your parents. And even as you became an adult and matured and became a seasoned saint, as they would say, forgiveness has always been a part of your story. So if you would take us back to those early childhood days of what your family life was about with your mom and your dad and your siblings, if you will, Miss Bush. Um, well, I have the, the story of having been um, born or uh, conceived out of wedlock. Um, and for years, I knew nothing of my father. Um, uh, there's always there was always a desire um, to have a daddy or to have a father. I would hear my friends talking about their experiences with their father, but I did not know my father. Um, so there was a great void. There was this desire to know this man, um, and often questions of who was he? You know, why is he not around? Um, my mom. Uh, makes me laugh um, because I've always had such a big heart. So even as a child, I would see about my other friends, and she had bought me school supplies. And mom used to buy my school supplies in bulk. So she would get a case of paper. She would get everything. And my, she noticed that my paper and stuff was dwindling. And she asked me, girl, I know I bought paper. Where is your paper? I said, well, I gave some to Pam. And she said, well, why did you give your paper to Pam? I said, she ain't got no daddy. And she looked at me and she said, you don't have one either. And I just, she laughed. But in my heart, even then, um, I had a heart for people who were fatherless. Um, I went through grade school um, not knowing of a father. Um, there was an attempt um, for, I guess, child support. So mom set it up. We went to court. Um, and I can even remember to this day what I wore, what it was like. Um, and we were in court. And on one side was me and my mom. And on the other side, was my father and his family, his wife and his two children. And um, we went through that one day, and I truly believe it was just too much for my mom. She just decided it was enough and that she would not take me through it. But I don't think she realized the level of trauma that it caused in my life. I don't think she realized the detriment of that experience Experience because that resonated in my heart for years after um, how he has those children. Why does he love them? Why doesn't he love me? Um, moving forward to my adolescent years, I had um, a friend, and we were really good friends, and we would look forward to um, sharing what we had done for the weekend um, on Mondays. And he would always have these great stories about 
how he and his father, his, he and his mom's boyfriend, spent time together and he took her um he took him to the movies or they went um and ate pizza or he just always had all these great stories and in my heart it was like I would look forward to hearing about his life and this father attention or father like attention that he was getting so um uh it, I can't remember um how long after him starting to tell me, but I ran into him. I went downtown and um, a friend of mine, she was looking for a gift for her father for his birthday. And we went downtown to this men's clothing store and we were in the men's clothing store and she was shopping and asking me how I like this. And, you know, we were deciding on what would be the perfect gift for her dad. And um, I can remember I noticed my friend come in the store. So I immediately ran over um, to talk to him. And he was talking and telling me he was in the store and he was in the store with his mom's boyfriend. So I'm looking for him, okay, because I wanted to see this man that was spending time with him, buying him things, uh -huh. uh, taking him places. And I looked over and to the side of him was the very same man that I had been in court with years before. And that thing really um, hit my heart heavy. Um, I did not say anything to him. He did not say anything to me. I walked away, and I walked away physically, but there was a level of still being at that point of Absolutely, my life. Absolutely, I can understand that. that. Yes. That, that void was still the there. Future. You were yes. still feeling the void and the hurt because now you've seen somebody who you previously, as you said, have been in court with. And this is known as your biological dad, but yet he's being the father to somebody else, somebody that is closer to you as well. So I can imagine the shock of that and as well as the hurt. But let me share some facts with you uh, while we're talking about biological fathers. According to statistics, it shows that more than a quarter of 121 million men in the United States are biological fathers of at least one child under the age of 18, but yet four out of five fathers of minor children live with at least some of these children. 79.8%, almost three quarters, which is 72.6% live with all of their minor children. So statistics has mm. already proven that the biological fathers in many, many cases are absent from home. And statistics also went on to say additionally, there are 1.8 million men who are solo fathers. Now that's really amazing mm. to minor children yeah. who live with that child and are not living with that spouse or the partner, but yet less than 6.0%, which equals to about 2 million of all fathers of minor children are solo dads, but that 7.2 7 million are absent dads, again, to all of their minor children. So way back then, the statistics were being written anyway to show now, even mm. today more so, that biological fathers are truly absent. And so therefore, this began your true story of forgiveness, because you now had to learn how to really forgive your biological yeah. father for in the way in which you knew now this was your father, because you said that you'd previously been to court with your mom, and, you know, you didn't even want to look that way and he wasn't looking your way. But yet here is someone as a dear close friend to you who is now already told you about this man. They celebrate holidays and birthdays, Father's Day together. Mm. And you were in the store helping, looking for gifts for the very man who has denied you as his daughter. So we again bring to you forgiveness and finding yourself. Forgiveness is a hard thing to do in such situation because you were actually denied. So now that you have entered, identified this man as your dad for real, um, obviously we couldn't hide this fact anymore. Tell us now, you're, you've left the store 
and you go back home to your mom. And so what is the reaction from your mom now learning that, okay, you've had this face-to-face -face confrontation? I never told her. Wow. I, <laughs> yes, I never told her. I held on to that. Um, um, I was the protector. I was the nurturer. <laughs> I didn't want to cause her any problems. So I never told her, but it manifested um, in my life uh, that looking for that love of a father, the attention of the father, it made me make crazy decisions. Um, I did not have healthy relationships with men um, up until I married my present husband. I didn't know how I should be treated, what I should be looking for. Um, you know, um, I think there was a song, looking for love in all of the wrong places, and that's literally what I did for so many years. But over time, I found a man, the ultimate man, and that was Jesus Christ. That was God, my Lord and my Savior, who saved me, who delivered me, who forgave me of um, my sins. And I was so excited to finally have a daddy somebody that would love me unconditionally, that would love me in spite of my mistakes and my shortcomings. So when I experienced the presence and the power of God through salvation, um, my biggest desire was then and still is to please my daddy. And it has been through relationship with God that I've been able to even come to a point of forgiving my father. Um, because if you don't deal with this stuff, this stuff festers in your body. Um, there were um, auto autoimmune um, situations that I have dealt with within my body. And I always try and find, you know, I, I truly believe that behind everything there is a spiritual um, reasoning. And I began to study um, autoimmune issues, diabetes, um, thyroid issues. And uh, I ran across the book by Apostle John Eckhart, and he talked about how there were uh, diseases that were associated with fatherlessness. And it just, it shifted my life. And I began to do deep study concerning um, the issues that I was dealing with as far as not being fathered and um, got before the Lord, prayed fast, and was able to get deliverance from those hurts, from those pains, and from being rejected. So um, it, it was a different path, um, but I thank God for it. <laughs> and that's awesome that you're on the journey. But we're going to take a commercial break, so I want you to stay right there with us, Ms. Bush, and we'll come back, and we're going to talk some more about the absence of a father in finding yourself, identifying who you are, your call, and your purpose according to the will of God. So stay there with us right there on a place called Through, broadcasting from WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network. And we're talking about fatherlessness and identity today. Stay here too, and we'll be back shortly. Mr. Happy Living here. I love good things made by good people. That's why I love Zona Plus, the world's first software-controlled handheld device that improves cardiovascular health using isometric exercise. You're going to love yours, too. I use mine almost every day to keep my blood pressure right where it should be. It also helps maintain healthy blood and oxygen flow and bone density and it increases the production of nitric oxide, which also increases blood flow and lowers blood pressure, all good stuff. But what really surprised me is this little device has been adding muscle to my biceps too. 
I walk around all day long feeling pumped. Check them out at happyliving.com and select Partners in Happy for $50 off. Plus, for every order placed in the month of January, I'll donate $50 to WITV7 and another $50 to LifeVest Inside. And we're back with Ms. Cheryl Bush, who's giving her story, Father, I Forgive You. She's talking about the forgiveness of her biological father as in many years during her childhood whom he was absent. And by a miracle and a surprise to her discovery through a friend, he was also the father of her closest friend. The hurt, the shame, the pain. But she has now been able to move on. She was the protector to her mom. She didn't tell her mom that she'd even witnessed seeing this same man who they had been in court with just days ago, being a father to someone else. And as she has grown through this pain, she has learned to have other relationships uh, with other people who have helped her as well mature through this time of forgiveness, the hurt and the pain. Welcome back to A Place Called Through. Ms. Cheryl Bush and her story continues with the hurt of being left alone by her father, Miss Bush. If you will take us to this point, uh, we know that you said that once you identified, you know, this guy as being your biological father and being a father to someone else, you went on and you got married. How was your marriage life? And tell us how you met this person whom you've married to now and had children with. And, and he took, because he's a male, so, Talk to us about that fatherness in him and as it affects, you know, your family. And I, look, I met my husband at the club. This was before Christ, okay? <laughs> um, I, have the, <laughs> I was leaving and I was uh, going in and he was leaving and he felt compelled to come back in and to introduce himself to me. And here we are 26 years later. Uh, we just had our anniversary on November the 26th. Um, we are still together. Um, but I met him and um, the, the thing that stood out with me, first of all, let me make sure you understand, when I married him, it was one week after I got saved and had given my life to Christ. So in essence, this man asked one woman to be his wife, but he married uh, a different woman. Amen. Amen. Uh, but um, it has been great. Um, we have weathered storms. Um, one of my levels of determination, um, even in my marriage, because every marriage goes through something, but I was determined that we would stay together. Um, uh, for the sake of my children, I did not want my children to be fatherless or to deal with that level of uh, rejection. I love his relationship with my children. Um, he has truly been the blueprint of father in the Bible in my children's lives. Um, my girls adore him, and he absolutely adores them. Um, some, I often have to remind both of them, you know, that this is my husband, that is your daddy. You know, just <laughs> kidding. But I love the relationship that he established with his girls. And he knew, they know if daddy says anything, even now, he's going to make it happen. So he has truly been um, a blessing um, in their lives. Um, and over the course of time, um, even with my personal healing, I was able to encounter my spiritual father who I, I you don't realize how broken you are until true healing comes to your heart. Um, I met my spiritual father in 2000, and uh, no, I met him in 2009, but I met him in person in 2014. And God has used him to speak to that little girl in me, that broken little girl. There are words that he has spoken over my life um, that I've seen come to manifestation. There are declarations and decrees that he's spoken into my life, which 
It just, it adds to the importance of that father being in a child's life. He even teaches me now over these past years, he's taught me how to be a better wife to my husband because I did not have that. Amen. Amen. Um, so it's a blessing. It's a blessing. And he is my daddy. And I, he thinks and he, to him, I'm his natural daughter. And to me, <laughs> he is my natural father. So I, I, I know the joy. I now can say I know the joy of being fathered and being loved by a father. And then that spiritual guy, just for clarity for our listeners and our viewers, this is actually someone who you met on Facebook at first. Mm-hmm. So that's why you it didn't is. get to see him until many years later, because you were actually friends on Facebook. And then you all yes. began to have conversations. And so he began to mentor with you and talk with you. And so when you physically were able to connect, then the mentorship continued as well as the spiritual journey now that you have found because you've had a point in your life where you've been broken, you've been hurt, you know, you, you went through the denial stage and you're married, you have your children of your own, and here comes a different view. Now you have a different look on life now. Um, that hurt that you once felt is no longer hurt. You can find peace. You found joy mm-hmm. in the midst of all of that. And so I want to take you to a place now Uh, with some more statistics that I did find out that 72% of Americans believe that a fatherless home is the most significant social problem and family problem that is facing our country. Living in a fatherless home is is a contributing factor to also substance abuse with children from such homes, according to 75% of adolescent patients being treated in substance abuse centers. Also, 85% of children which exhibit some type of behavioral disorder come from a fatherless home. 90% of the youth in the United States who even decide to run away from home or become homeless themselves for whatever reason, originally they come from fatherless homes. 63% of youth suicides involve a child who was living in what? A fatherless home when they made that final decision. So the father is key to a happy home. Um, And it also went on to say that over 30% of the fatherless homes are classified as being food insecure. Yet only 13% of homes will utilize the services of a food pantry. Over 30% of fatherless homes also spend more than half of their income on housing costs, which classifies the household as experiencing a severe housing burden. Finally, the statistics go on and conclude that children who live in a fatherless home are 200 and 79% more likely to deal drugs or carry firearms or offensive purposes compared to children who live with their father. And the last stat is 92% of parents who are currently in prison in the United States are fathers. Those are some alarming numbers for us to have, you know, because the father really is key. Both parents have significant roles But far too many times we see that, yes, the fathers are not there and we don't know everybody's reason. Things do happen for a reason. But we are so thankful to that one father who never, never left us alone. And as we get ready to wrap this up, Ms. Bush, we want to go ahead and talk about you all. So found, you know, you used to go to church all the time from an early age. And you noted earlier with me that you also sang in the choir. You found some disparities there. And so, but you never gave up that one thing, your hope, your now new belief and that newness in Christ that has now brought you to this point, to this place of going through. So if you would, for the last couple of minutes, go ahead and tell us some more about how you got through all of that that drama. I mean, because it was clear drama because you had to deal with it from protecting your mom and now your friends actually knowing the truth that this is your dad as well. And so now you're married with children. And so 
you know, you're having to protect and prevent a lot of stuff from happening. So if you would bring us to the end of this for us, and we appreciate all that you've gone through. And we thank God for your strength, for the power that you have developed within. I, 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 I'm a woman of prayer, and um, I truly believe that that is the key um, to my ability to get to this point. Um, I tell people prayer is who I am. It's my passion. It's my oxygen. And um, it is through prayer, because that was the very first ministry that I operated in, um, the intercessory prayer ministry um, within my church. And it was through prayer, through relationship with God, because um, oftentimes we look at prayer, um, we try to come up with these great um, definitions of prayer, but my definition of prayer is communication with God and communicating at an, at such an intimate rate that your life is changed and impacted. So it has been through prayer that I have been able to make it through. Um, and prayer is my go-to place when I'm in heart pressed um, situations and circumstances, I go to prayer. I go to Father. I found that Father 26 years ago, and he is still my place of refuge. I've learned the, the key to being able to operate and maintain uh, a forgiving heart is continually going into prayer, asking Father to cleanse and purify my heart. Um, scripture says that the heart is the heart is deceitfully wicked. Who can know it? Meaning there can be things in our heart that we don't realize. So it is through uh, my prayer life that I've been able to make it to come up, to come out, and to um, find this new place of reckoning in God. It is through my prayer life that I've been blessed to um, found uh, an international women's prayer ministry where I'm now able to empower, to teach, and to train other women to pray. I tell people that Pray Woman Pray Incorporated, which is the name of the prayer ministry, is a ministry of reconciliation because of the hurts, because of the pains, because of the difficult situations that God has allowed me to weather. I am now positioned to pray other people up out of it, to encourage other people out of it, and also to encourage women to find their prophetic purpose or their prophetic destiny. So I'm just so very grateful to God for my life. Um, that is one of the key signs of, of deliverance, when you can thank God for the hard places, when you can thank God for what he has brought you through, because as, as I said before, I'm that nurturer, and my heart is that nobody goes through what I have gone through, amen, so I, I bless God for what he's done and for what he continues to do in my life and, and um, that ability or having that place where I can go, pour out my heart, because life is hard. There are situations and circumstances, hits and blows that come, but there is a Father in heaven that loves you. And I tell people all the time, not only does he love you, but he loves you so much that thousands and thousands of years ago, before you were thought about, before you were created, before your great, great, great grandma met your great, great, great granddad, he created a way of escape. And that escape was through his son, Jesus Christ. So I, I love God. I love God's people, and I thank him for being um, that forgiving God that he has been in my life. I um, wanted to let you know if you would uh, like to uh, connect with um, Pray Woman Pray Incorporated, that um, um, you can go to our webpage, praywomanpray.org. I've recently um, written a book. It is uh, 
um, 21 Days to Kingdom Dominion. It can be found at tcbministries.org. But I'm just blessed and excited about God and who he is in this season and in this hour. Well, we sure thank you for sharing that story. Father, I forgive you. And if you would, let our viewers and our listeners know if there's an email address or a phone number that they can reach out to you. As you've indicated, you know, you're the founder of this group, awesome group, Pray, Woman, Pray, and also the author of Kingdom Builders, 21 Day Journal, to teach you how to pray and have this newness in Christ. So if you would share with us as we conclude this, and I want to thank you again for being my guest here on A Place Called Food. So if you would share with them that information and we just thank you. Um, I, I can be reached um, via email at praywomanpray at gmail.com or you can reach out to me via the um, web page, praywomanpray.org. Um, um, and we have a Facebook page, Pray Woman Pray, I N. Um, you can reach me there. You can inbox me, and I will respond as quickly as possible. And I'm so grateful to you, ma'am, for this opportunity. Well, I thank you. And they can buy your book, Kingdom Builders, is available where? How can they get a copy of your book? PCBMinistries.org. Um, and I have a bookstore um, on, on there with a product and stuff. You heard it from Miss Cheryl Bush. Father, I forgive you, and it's truly been an honor to have you today here on A Place Called Through, where we're broadcasting from WYTV7 Christian Broadcasters Network, where we share stories of mission of hope. I am the host, Patricia Wade Goings. If you'd like to be my guest, you may do so by reaching me in area code of 843-608-9744 by email at pgoingswp at gmail.com. You may also follow me on Facebook at A Place Called Through at Willpower, The Call to Rise Above. And my book, Willpower, The Call to Rise Above, is available on Amazon. God bless you. Thank you again. And have an awesomely blessed day. Swing into their dreams foundation presents the golf tournament of the year, raising scholarships for aspiring national golf club in Milton, Georgia. The inaugural HBCU Swing into their dreams charity golf tournament. Registration and gourmet continental breakfast begins at 8 a.m and shotgun at 10 a.m. Award reception follows. Come enjoy a day of jazz, mimosa, cigars, cash bar, silent auction, and more. For more information, contact 770-686-7143. Don't miss it.